So hello and thanks for coming today to our part one talk about self-esteem and confidence. I'm Hadra, a wellbeing practitioner at Sensei 33 and I'm here today with my colleague Oli. Do you want to say hello, hello Oli? Yep, uh, I'm a trainee uh, wellbeing practitioner here at Sensei 33. Perfect. Okay, so we'll get started. So to give you a bit of an overview of what we'll be kind of covering today, this is a 45 minute talk. Um, along with 15 minutes at the end for a question and answer session. Um, we will start off kind of exploring self-esteem is and things that can kind of affect self-esteem. Um, and the content then is to kind of explore the impact of how we speak to ourselves. And I'll be sharing some tips around kind of self-talk as well. Uh, we then kind of focus on the impact of what other people do and say, and again, share tips around this. And we will explore the impact of media and more kind of specifically social media. Sorry, let me just move this back away. Um, and we'll finish the talk by sharing um, places for you to kind of go for further information and support. And then, um, as I say, 15 minutes at the end for a Q&A to hear any feedback. Hope that sounds okay. Okay, so just a couple of things to mention before we get started it's really important to ensure everyone's confidentiality and anonymity and um, anonymity is protected so that you um so can you all kind of keep your cameras and, and microphones switched off and um, we, we ask you to please to not kind of record or screenshot the talk a recording will be available on our website and youtube channel in the next couple of weeks so you can always kind of re-watch it um if it's helpful okay um, you may want a pen and paper to hand to make any notes. And when we come to the Q&A se se section at the end, we will turn on the chat function and you can write any questions you have there. Um, and only me and Ollie will kind of be able to see them because it won't be available. Oh, I think it won't be available till the end. You might want to write down any questions you have as we go along. And lastly, our confidentiality policy is that anything shared within Centre 33 will stay within Centre 33, unless we feel there is a risk to harm to yourself or someone else. And um, if that was the case, we might need to share information externally with other people that could help. So if anyone did share something in the chat that kind of concerned us, um, then we, can, we would get in touch with you individually to follow this up and, and we would explain if we needed to contact anyone else to get support. Cool, so let's get started. So first things first, what is self-esteem? So self-esteem is the opinion we have about ourselves. It's not just about how we kind of physically look, but also about how we are as a person and how confident we feel. Having a good kind of self-esteem means we feel positive about ourselves and confident in who we are and in our abilities. Um, when we have a good self-esteem, we worry less about what other people think and what we kind of get wrong because we accept ourselves just the way we are. Um, it also make, means we believe we are worthy and deserve good things to happen to us in life. But sometimes we might find it hard to kind of believe we deserve love, support or feel good enough. And that's OK. It's perfectly normal to kind of struggle with self-esteem. And hopefully some of the tips in this talk today will help you um, to improve yours. OK. So there are many different things um, that can affect our mental health and cause us to develop lower self-esteem. These can include our life experiences, things uh, people say to us, ways people treat us, um, things we say to ourselves, stresses and pressures, whether ones you know, we put on ourselves or feel directly or indirectly from others. And um, adjusting to change can affect confidence levels, our mental mental and physical health and um, experiencing discrimination and the impact of kind of social society so social pressures and stereotypes expectations social media also kind of celebrity culture as we will talk more about that later um, so obviously what has affected your self-esteem it's important to remember that you have the right to feel good about who you are whatever kind of has affected you it can also help to remind that to kind of just remind remember remind ourselves that self-esteem is not fixed and it can kind of fluctuate over our lifetime and just as kind of there might be things that have 
negative impact, you might also encounter things that have a positive impact. Um, and it is also possible to make changes in our life that can make um, or help to improve it. Okay. Okay, so the way we think can have a big impact on how we feel and what we do. And it can be kind of easy to develop a habit of saying negative things to ourselves. But these thoughts can really um, understandably affect our feelings and cause us to feel low, dissatisfied, kind of worthless or inadequate. Um, so if we look at the first diagram, for example, if someone thinks I'm useless at this, I'm bound to fail, um, it's understandable that they might start to feel down and quite kind of helpless about the task. Um, and this then is likely to kind of impact on what they do next or and kind of may feel um, or may kind of will cause someone to withdraw or isolate. And so they may not kind of reach out for help. Then they may not see the point of trying as hard or even kind of in doing the task at all. And um, if we look at the second diagram, but in kind of, but instead of this person's thoughts, this, so instead of this person kind of thinking, this may not be my strongest subject, um, but I am kind of all right at it and I can only try my best. And then may, that, you know, they may kind of start feel, to feel slightly more help, um, hopeful and positive about their ability. And then they might kind of, or they may kind of act differently by doing something to help themselves with um, the subjects such as kind of creating a revision plan or asking their teacher for more information or whatever they need to do. So one way to improve our self-esteem is to change the way we speak to ourselves. Um, and this might seem like a hard thing to do if it's become a habit. And it, it often kind of takes time to practice to change thought patterns, but it is possible. Okay. Um, so one of the reasons why thoughts often have a strong influence on our feelings is because our brains kind of misinterpret thoughts as facts um, when this is not always the case. Um, so research has um, identified eight common, common kind of thinking styles or thinking traps that people can fall into. And we want to talk, um, talk you kind of through these today because recognizing when you're falling into thinking traps is a really helpful first step to challenging them to kind of start doing something about it. So we've got the all or nothing thinking, um, kind of only thinking of things in terms of the two extremes rather than allowing room for a middle ground. And we've got someone that can be kind of overgeneralizing. So making kind of sweeping uh, statements based on only one or two experiences um, and a lot of should statements as well. So telling yourself you should, you must feel or you must kind of do or behave in a way this can put unrealistic expectations on ourselves and cause us to feel um disappointment quite a lot um and then it's not my fault sort of blaming ourselves for situations or um sorry it's my fault blaming ourselves for situations or events that are not or not fully our responsibility and the catch um Catrus, I can't always struggle with this one. So predicting that the worst case scenario is going to happen. And yeah, there we are, negative filter, only focusing on negative things and ignoring or overlooking any positives. Uh, labeling as well, so um, reducing ourselves kind of down to a single word or a label, which usually is something negative all the time sometimes. Um, the fortune telling as well, so predicting uh, what is going to happen in the future and often thinking it's going to be a bad thing. So I guess have a think about whether you can identify any of these common traps. Um, as, I can't, as I said, recognizing when you're having them is the first step to changing them. Okay. Um, so another way of referring to these negative or kind of disapproving or unhelpful thoughts is to think of them as an inner critic. So kind of, but remember your inner critic is not the whole of who you are. They do not kind of um, define you and what they say is not always a fact. They are one voice and it is possible to kind of quieten this voice and reduce the negative impact it has. So when thinking about your kind of inner critic, ask yourself questions like, would I talk to someone else in that way? Um, would it be acceptable if someone else talked to me in like this? So generally the answer to those questions would be no. And if that's the case, then 
should we continue to allow our inner critic to talk to us like that? And these are a few kind of different ways we can respond to that inner critic voice that we can hear sometimes. So one thing to try is to kind of recognize when our inner critic is speaking and separate ourselves from it, saying things to um, saying things to ourselves like, what um that's what my inner kind of critic thinks and but i don't have to agree and um, noticing when it's speaking but choose to kind of not to engage with it so oh there goes kind of my inner critic again i'm not going to engage with it this time and and kind of consciously telling yourself that stand up to it so saying things such as that's not what i'm like or i i know that isn't true because whatever reason and lastly, challenge it. So remind yourself that thoughts are not facts and identify whether or not you're falling into a thinking trap and ask yourself what other alternatives there are. And we're going to talk more about kind of thought challenging in the next slides. So to give some examples of how to challenge your inner critic, if there are, um, if they were kind of telling you um, rubbish at singing, you could say in response, okay, so what if I'm not the best singer? I enjoy singing and there are, there are other things I do well. And um, if it made us kind of think I'm a failure, we could say back, I might not have done as well um, as I would like in my exam, but that doesn't make me a failure. I tried my hardest and that's something to be proud of. Um, again, if it made um, us feel like they hate me, um, we could reflect on the situation and reply, just because my friend hasn't replied to my text, it doesn't mean they hate me. They could be busy or just taking some time out for themselves. Um, or lastly, if we thought um, I'm ugly, we could kind of challenge this by telling ourselves, you know, society's idea of beauty isn't the only kind of it, the kind there is. And um, I might not like one, or I might not like one thing about myself, but I like other things such as, and you can list a few things that you like about yourself, or my appearance doesn't define my worth. It's a good one to kind of just drill into your, into your brain, I guess. Um, so it could help to write a list of common negative thoughts you have about yourself and go through them one by one, coming up with ways to challenge them and then kind of practice those helpful thoughts regularly. Um, a tip is if you're finding this exercise hard, think about what you would say to a friend who was kind of having these unhelpful habits or unhelpful thoughts, sorry. Okay, so not only can it help to kind of challenge specific negative thoughts, it can also help to kind of generally increase the number of positive things we say to ourselves. So creating a positive coping thought can make us feel a bit more capable, confident, and able to manage situations. So positive thoughts could include, um, I can do this, I'm capable, I am enough, or I am worthy of respect and love. But it's not important that they are, um, but it is important that they are personalized to you and have a think about what kind of what positive things you already say to yourself or could start to say to yourself and make a list of these things and tell yourself them every day. Okay, so now we're going to move on to think about the impacts the media and society has on people's self esteem. So obviously different cultures and societies have different ideals, I guess, about what people, ideas about what people should and shouldn't do look like or act like. And extra, there's some, the list is quite long. And um, so these um, ideas, I guess, are upheld and presented in various ways, including by the media, such as magazines, articles, TV programs, advertising, and so on. And this can create stereotypes and unrealistic expectations, which cause many people to kind of feel inadequate about themselves and feel pressure to change. Um, so perhaps have a think about where your kind of ideas about ideas about who, who kind of, sh well, about what you should be like in a way, or it might be the, the kind of the more of them that come from society or social media and how realistic they are. It's good to kind of reflect back on how, how much social media affects us and how much media in general have affects us and, and the way we see ourselves and our self-esteem. Okay, so there are some important things to kind of consider when interacting with the media. So obviously the media tends to portray and, and represent particular stereotypes. 
they are often unrepresentative of the diversity of the population and the range of ways that people can be. Um, and just because other people are telling you that you should be, look or act in a certain way, it doesn't mean it's the only way to be, and it doesn't mean you have to change. And if you notice that watching a certain program or looking at a certain website leaves you kind of feeling a bad, feeling a bit bad about yourself, then try to kind of reduce the amount of time on it. Um, and find and engage with, with media, which kind of is representative and celebrates individual diversities and kind of has realistic standards. Um, I would now like to kind of focus more specifically on social media and the impact this can have on our self-esteem and confidence. So while there are many positives to social media, like keeping in touch with loved ones and expressing ourselves and our opinions, being part of a large community and just kind of keeping up to date about what's going on in the world, it does also have its kind of downsides as well. For example, in kind of encouraging comparison to others, encouraging competition, the ability to kind of edit, manipulate and filter things and the content that's put out there. Selective posting as well, uh, kind of posting inaccurate or false information. So obviously when using social media, it's important to remember we cannot always take what we see or read online as fact. Um, posts are really kind of representative of people's lives and um, people often filter or edit the content they share to show kind of the best about themselves and their lives rather than showing the kind of the full picture. Okay, so we could kind of encourage you to consider the relationship you have with social media and how using it affects your mood and to kind of be um, aware of any triggers. For example, do you always find yourself comparing your life to others online or comparing your appearance to others? Do you find going on it at certain times of the day, like right before bed or has kind of worsened the impact? Um, are there certain topics or people that reading about leads you to kind of feeling bad about yourself? But also consider which kind of aspects of social media have a neutral, even kind of positive impact on how you feel. We're not kind of suggesting to stop using it altogether, but reflect on, on reflecting on the ways it positively and negatively impacts you may be very, very, very helpful. Um, some other things we would suggest um, include unfollow accounts that make you feel kind of inadequate or bad about yourself. Um, follow accounts that make you feel good about yourself, that celebrate diversity, promote healthy relationship with others and so on. Um, and just maybe consider reducing time spent on social media in general. Okay. So that brings us to further support. Um, so if you need further support with your mental health, we would encourage you to reach out to some of your, some of these um, support uh, system I put on the on the screen. So your GP, we've got Coop, the Mix, Young Minds, um, the Kite Trust, B, Centre Thirty Three. There are many, many that could that are out there to kind of support um, young people. You can also reach out to Centre Thirty Three for support with practical issues or men or emotional needs, whether it's a one-off chat about something, um, or you kind of when you need you know, as if when you need or a more kind of ongoing support, we can help with a range of things, including mental health, housing, employment, money, sexual health, young carers, and so on. You can contact us Monday to Friday between 12 to 5 p.m. or Saturday uh, from 10 to 1 p.m. or kind of leave a message outside these times. You can call, text or, or WhatsApp or email. We have also reopened our drop drop-ins um, in our Ely, Cambridge and Wisbeach hubs. Check out our website for the locations and, and the latest opening times. Or you could also scan the QR code to get the link to the website or and socials on your phone. Maybe give us a, a follow to keep in touch. Again, if you ever need mental health support urgently or in a crisis, it's really important to reach out to someone for help whether that's a trusted adult or a support system. So we wanted to share with you some contact details in an emergency and other cr um, crisis support services kind of including the ones on the support in emergency, um, first response uh, services, child lines, so on. 
So that's the end of the talk. Thank you all for joining me today. We hope you've, um, you found it helpful. Um, thank you for joining me in this heat wave as well. We will now kind of open up for any questions you might have. And also please don't forget that part two of this talk will um, be on the 25th of July. That will be next week, Monday, I believe.